Now I know when we talk about sleeves, a lot of times people go like, wow, that's something that they don't want to touch at all. But I'm telling you, if I can do it, then you can do it for sure. It's going to be an experiment. We're going to have a lot of fun together. And to prove to you that even you can make at least one of these sleeves without a problem, no matter what is your skill level, go ahead, go to your kitchen and grab the biggest circle round object that you have that you can actually trace. In my case, it's going to be a plate and I'm gonna get started with my first sleeve. All right, this is the first type of sleeve that we're gonna take a look at, a beautiful butterfly sleeve. So you have your plate, go ahead and place it face down, and we're gonna go ahead and trace it. I don't think that mine is large enough to my desire, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit larger. All right, almost done. For those who don't know, this is also a really easy and great way how to add seam allowances to your patterns as well. My circle is done, and you know what? I did change my mind, so I decided to go for even bigger circle than at the beginning, so the black outline is what we're going to be working with. Now, throughout all of the experiments and sleeves that you're gonna see today, I'm gonna be working with the same bodice block, a woven bodice block without a dart. You can use anything you have. The only reason this simplest explanation for me not using a bodice block with darts is because I don't want to take time to do the darts right now. So I'm just using a simple bodice block without a dart and the sleeve, the basic sleeve that goes to it for all of the tutorials today. Now I need to figure out what is the length of the front and the back armhole. So for this next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my circle right over here and I need to build another circle, smaller circle inside of it that is going to be the front armhole plus the back armhole in circumference. So eight and a quarter plus eight and a quarter will be 16 and a half. I'm gonna do this very easy, not by the book, but of course when you're doing it, you're gonna use the pi formula and everything else. But for right now, this is going to be the circle that we're going to use. I'm gonna place it inside of my bigger circle. And now I want to off-center it a little bit because I want my sleeve to be longer and fuller on the top and smaller on the bottom. Don't forget to mark the top and the bottom of the sleeve, so where the shoulder seam is at and where the side seam matches with the bottom of the armhole so that way you know how to match up the sleeve to your garment. And let's go ahead and cut this out and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the fabric. Now, needless to say, I don't add seam allowances to my paper patterns, but I always add them as I cut my fabric. That's one of the reasons why you can see me here cutting a little bit larger than the actual pattern is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and base it in together and it's going to look super fun. The first sleeve is done. Wasn't that easy? That was pretty straightforward and fun as well. So let's get started with the other sleeve and once both of them are done, I'm gonna go ahead and try it on so that way we can pair one style versus the other. So for this next sleeve, let's go ahead and grab just a regular sleeve like this that goes to your garment. And this is what we're gonna do next. So we're going for a sleeve that has that little puff at the crown right over here. A very popular, gives you that kind of like a bold shoulder. And this is how we're going to achieve that. So this is my sleeve right over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it and draw a little triangle over here and then we're going to lift it up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this apart. There we go, and I stole my child's construction paper. <laughs> so that way you can see a little bit better. And it is easier if you go ahead and extend the line right over here that marks the center of the sleeve. That's just gonna make it a little bit easier for us to put all the pattern pieces back. So you wanna cut them apart, but you want to leave them anchored right over here so that way you can spread them apart, but this part is still attached. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this evenly so that way each one of these three parts is equal. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and connect all of this together, smooth it out where needed, and my pattern is ready to be cut out. I'm also marking from where to where I'm gonna be gathering my sleeve so that way I know exactly where those gathers are gonna be. It's done, so it's time to go ahead and put it on. And obviously, I just want to remind you that the garment that you see right over here, the bodice block is without darts. That's the reason you might see some puckering because obviously doing a garment without darts is always gonna give you a less accurate result in terms of how it sits than when you do a garment with a dart. And this is a very stiff calico muslin. So you see this sleeve, the circle sleeve, kinda goes and puckers in all sorts of different directions. If you use chiffon or 
or silk or something flowy, it's going to take a really beautiful shape. So definitely don't be discouraged by that. So let me know, which one do you like better, the circle sleeve or this long sleeve with a little puff here at the crown? I like both of them. This one, you can make a long one too, and you will often see that in wedding dresses or special occasion wear. Even in capes, you can do like a cape sleeve like that. And this one, I think I might just do a sweater for myself for like springtime with a little puff right over here just to add that design element. For this one, I'm gonna grab two copies of the same sleeve. I'm just gonna make it short one. So two copies of the same sleeve. Here's my little step-by-step -step sheet that I've created. First, what I want to do is I wanna take either one of these because these are two copies and I want to create this kind of like a crisscross pattern between them. You can also shift it to one side or to the other side. Just really depends on how you want that sleeve to be and how you want it to look on your actual garment. Now that is done. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to take one of these, go ahead and lay it on top and just copy one of these lines because I need to create one side and the other side since they're going to overlap like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut these apart. There we go. And now for the next step, what I want to do is I want to take this part right over here and I do want to slice it up so that way I can create this little puff element right over here. Because if you don't, it kind of looks a little flat, but you can also experiment with that too. But I want a little puff right over here. So what I want to do is I want to slice up here, a couple of straight lines, and then we're gonna go ahead and slash it and spread it open. I'm gonna cut this up to this line, but not all the way through. This will be the new center of the sleeve. And now what we're going to do, so the old center of the sleeve is right over here, this black line. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and spread it by, let's say one inch. Let's say, mm, let's say three quarters of an inch each. right over here. This crafter's tape and this like a little rolly dispenser is actually pretty decent for a task like slashing and spreading your patterns or maybe assembling PDF patterns. Now I'm gonna tell you this, I absolutely love card making. I usually do watercolor cards and I bought this for that particular purpose and I don't love it for my card making. That's one of the reasons why I decided to try it out with my pattern making. And for this task, it's actually pretty decent. So uh, I think I bought it at Hobby Lobby. So if you're struggling with regular adhesives like tape or glue, this might be something to look into, just like an extra tip. I'm gonna go ahead and connect it all and maybe raise this part just by a tiny bit. The sleeve is ready. I'm going for the concept today, not necessarily for the final execution. I just want to play around and discover the shapes and styles and see what looks great and what could be a good thing to put in my toolbox of sewing knowledge for the future. So here's a little inspiration for this type of sleeve and this is how my sleeve looks when it's all done. Now looking at it now, I should have done more gathers on the other front side of the actual sleeve, but I do love the way it looks. It has that little flirty element to it. Here you see the crisscross pattern, how it goes underneath right over there. And you can do so many interesting things with it. So it's definitely a win and definitely something to consider for the future. This next one, you guys know that I love this sleeve because you already see me make garments with it time and time again. Besides, you can actually wear it two ways from the same pattern, so it's like a little bonus. Besides, it's really easy to make it. So I'm gonna get started with a long sleeve like this one and then we're gonna slash it and spread it. So here I have roughly slashed it apart about one inch because the bottom of my sleeve is just about eight inches. So that's how I'm going to cut it apart. And I'm going to spread it apart, let's say by, oh, we can do another one inch apart each of the slashes. So that way we'll see what kind of volume it's gonna give us. 
all right I slashed the center too and I'm actually gonna go ahead and get started on this because once you slash all of them there's gonna be a lot of loose parts and it's a little bit easier for me I find to handle them as I go instead of handling them once they're all cut all right slashing and spreading is done I think Artemis is gonna be very upset by the fact that I used up nearly all of her purple crafting paper so now all I have to do is I just need to curve in the bottom and make sure that I tidy it up so that way it's all nice and even across the board and after that we can take it and cut it out of the fabric and try it out there it is and you're gonna put it together just like a regular sleeve dear sewing friend if you like what you see or at least you're having fun and you're enjoying this experiment just as much as I am go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and you might even want to consider to subscribe because who knows what kind of good stuff you might be missing all right so this is for one side of our base garment for the other one let's do this one this is gonna be a short sleeve like a cap sleeve you can do a couple of versions a really tiny cap or a cap that goes all the way to the bottom of the armhole. Basically, we're just going to draw a curved line like this that goes above this line right over here. So from here, let's say I'm going to take one inch down right over here and let's say one inch right over here and obviously all of these you can adjust up to your preference right now i'm just playing around and seeing what is interesting what looks good on me what do i like as a style and let's say right over here i'm gonna take let's say one inch up as well so now i'm going to go ahead and connect it with a curved line like so and of course if i want a really tiny one then what you would do is you would just kind of go let's say from here till here and you would do a completely small cap something like this and that's it we don't really have to adjust much i might move this line a little bit right over here maybe i make it shorter but in a gist that really is what it is all right once this is cut what i like to do on short sleeves is i like to put these two ends together like so because once sewn they're gonna create a really sharp angle over here and i don't want that and then I'm just gonna smooth this out so that way once we have the sleeve in, it actually is going to have a really nice angle pointing out, which is not going to be an angle at all, it's just gonna be a really nice smooth line. Now, if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so, so much for your support. And then don't forget to check out Members Extra video for this topic and many others, as well as additional information and resources that are available for you as a part of membership. There we go. I must tell you that I absolutely love cap sleeves, especially for summertime. It's a great option when you want to have a sleeve, but you want it to be as minimal as possible. So this definitely is a win. And for this sleeve, it doesn't necessarily have to be a long sleeve. You can also make it shorter, half the length, or even shorter than that. Definitely lots of options. As I mentioned, you can actually wear the sleeve two different ways. You can wear it as is, just a very wide sleeve like this, or you can actually gather it on the bottom into a bishop sleeve so we're gonna do both ways and this is how it looks when it's all gathered up of course you can add a cuff you can make it in woven you can make it in knit fabrics both of these sleeves are a lot of fun and definitely open a lot of possibilities into creation of your design now here's a great question how to draft a basic sleeve to begin with so that way after that you can modify it into all of these different sleeves that we experimented with today to answer that question here's a full video that will explain everything that you need to know about a sleeve so go ahead and click right over here thank you so much for watching and until next time happy thoughtful and creative sewing i'll see you soon bye